Hello everyone. It's been a while, hasn't it? Did you miss me? Because I still don't know who I am. I realize it's been almost a whole year since I played this game, but there's a reason for that. Rather unwisely, I stumbled myself into some spoilers regarding the story. Nothing too major that would obliterate the game for me. It wasn't for lack of enjoying the game or anything, it was that I kind of spoiled a bit of the mystery behind what's going on. So after kind of deliberating on how I would approach this game, I just figured I'd take a break from it, give my head some time to build up cobwebs, and forget some details and such. And I'd say it mostly worked. And so to start off this grand return, I think I'm going to put on some shoes. Come on, Kim, we're going to my hotel room. You're not gonna like it. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray. Light it up and smoke the living shit out of it. It sure has been a while since I played a game with intrusive thought mechanics. Am I a smoker? Who knows what you are? A monster? A murderer? The gnome of Jeroma? You feel like a smoker. Especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub. Still smoldering deliciously. But she broke it at the filter. I can't smoke that. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack. Strike that, a carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied, then smoke them all. I'll make it priority one. Good. They'll make you stronger and better. You're too old to be cool now, but find cigarettes, smoke them, blam. Instantly a cool renegade man, a mystical red dragon with smoke rising from his nostrils. Oh hell yeah, that's totally what I'll look like instead of a man with nothing left to live for. Plus, smoking them gives massive bonuses. Alright, find a cigarette. New mission. But first, I do need some shoes. Kim tries not to look at your broken down bathroom door. Thanks, it's polite of you. Where be my shoes? Kim also tries not to look at the pile of taped viscera on the carpet, or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. Kim, I think at this point you should just close your eyes. You're going to be hard pressed to see anything in this room that doesn't reek of disappointment. The man is finding it hard not to trip on the tape, and not to send any of the bottles rolling across the floor. I appreciate that though, I worked hard emptying those bottles. We're unidentifiable sludge makes it hard for him to breathe. Smells of vomit in here. <laughs> You're looking at the destruction. He nods. Well, I did it. My way. I can see that. Now I'd like to look at my own face. Wait, no, that's the mirror. A mirror hangs on the wall, covered in steam. You cannot see yourself, just the outlines of a man. You have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Let's wipe the mirror and see if I actually am a clot from Killing Floor or a real person. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there. And you will never unbecome it. I don't care. Behold. Oh my god. I can see the pain he hides behind his eyes. I actually don't know from which angle he looks less together. The main portrait or the one in the lower left corner? You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Dear Lord, help me, what is this? Whatever it is, at least it's dead now. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Yes, it's the only one I have. <laughs> Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Okay, let's try to stop. Oh my God. You can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Superstardom. <laughs> now honestly, I think this guy really is running from demons with that smile. I mean, look at his eyes. This guy clearly went through something, I feel. Yeah, let's be honest here, it's an expression of pain. You are correct. I could either dig deep into my mind to locate the source of it, or attempt to stop the expression. There's no sugarcoating it though, I have a very low chance of doing either of those things. I didn't spec very much into thinking. I mean, look at my mental health, I'm already one hit to my confidence away from a panic attack. Let's try to dig into my mind. Like the rest of you, 
It comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. Yeah, seems about right. Well, let's attempt the impossible. It's too late. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. I don't get it though. It said that I could retry white checks, but I can't retry either of them. Well, it's been a long time. Maybe I'm forgetting something. Yeah, my intelligence is too, and I'm not done compressing my butt cheeks. I think I have a bit of a long way to go before I'm capable of introspection. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. Much like mine actually do. The option to go to sleep becomes available every night after 9 p.m. Which part of my brain is that? Oh, there are my shoes. All right, and there's my tie. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. <laughs> truly horrific. I love that I have a medium chance of failing to grab the tie, but it's one I'm going to take. You reach out to grab the tie. But what's this? Diffuse, radiating chest pain. Doom comes over you. Am I gonna die again? This is bad. Feels like sharp stones grinding in your chest and keeping you from moving. I'm having a heart attack trying to grab my tie from a ceiling. <laughs> I am this town's only hope. For quite a long time. Still ongoing. Now is a good time to start worrying. Okay, I guess I'll do that then. Finally, the pressure recedes. You find yourself covered in cold sweat and trying not to move, hoping it will keep you from dying. You know what you should do. You should stop the fan and then try again. It'll get easier. Do it if you want to die. The stabbing pain in your chest is telling you. You're hanging by a thread here. Alright, I guess I'm going to stop flirting with danger and turn the fan off. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. Imagine if I fail this again. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Alright. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous thick tie. With four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. Oh, if only. Alright, I have successfully gotten dressed. I should probably just examine whatever I can, and do whatever I can, even if it has nothing to do with what I'm supposed to be doing. What's that? That's my- is that my other shoe? Kim is like, oh god, we're going back into the apartment. Yes, we are, Kim. This is where the magic happens. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. I will now utilize the technique of visual calculus to assess the damage. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window, came from the inside. Did I break it with my own hands? A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. Oh, that's surprising. What did this then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Let's assess the size of the impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy, and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Thanks. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. Maybe it wasn't me. You mean... Someone else took your shoe off and smashed the window with it? I don't need it. I don't need anyone. The window agrees. Its cracked smile is cold and sparkly. But nonetheless, I will still go get it. A gust of briny wind washes over you. Huh. Okay, now I am fully dressed. Check me out. Get ready, world, because I might have another heart attack. Right, I'm on a mission to find smokes. Did I call Sylvie using Kim's shortwave? I guess not. There they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited on your feet. Wait, why do these not look like normal cop shoes? It's pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. Damn right. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now. Truth be told. 
Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. 